Hoping when Jennifer went, but I wanted to thank her. That was good work. Did she leave? Oh, okay. There she is. She's still with us. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Um, is it still Thursday? 11 o'clock Thursday, 11 o'clock right over Memorial. And uh, we want you to come. And right in following that immediately, we're going to have a potluck, okay? And uh, I don't know all the details of what's going to happen yet, but I know it'll be good. And uh, we need to be praying and seeking God that this place will fill up. And the glory of God will fall on this place. Amen. And there will be good things happening. Amen. So uh, Thursday at 11 o'clock, we're going to do that, okay? And uh, you continue to pray as we have been. And uh, that's a good thing. Amen. That's a good thing. Praise the Lord. We won't remember the bad, we'll remember the good. Always the good. God is a God of good things. Amen. Well, I didn't. you didn't hear me, Jennifer, but thank you. That was a good word. I appreciate you. Bless you. I mean, uh, uh, I wrote all that down. Not only that, I put it on DVD because I'm going to keep it. Yes, sir. I didn't realize that it wasn't recording for a minute, and it dawned me, hey, the chip, there's something wrong here. So I fixed it real quick, but I got four minutes of blank, and then I got the rest. So whatever that amounted to, we got it. That's a blessing. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Bless your heart. Amen. <clears throat> now, this morning, I want to share with you a thing or two, and I'm not going to keep you too long, I don't think, but I want to share some stuff with you that I that I need in my own life, okay? How many of you know that generally when I preach, it's for me first, and then it's for you and whoever else wants to listen in? But uh, uh, I've been praying about this for a while, and uh, this is something that is necessary in our homes and in our churches. It's necessary, and, and it's, uh, it's important, and I'm not good at it, but God's good at it. You hear me? Um, but, I'm gonna, but He can teach us, and I want to learn it, and I want to be able to do this, and I want to see God's glory. So open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. I just want to read a short story, a piece out of there, Ephesians chapter 4. And everybody has read this, I'm sure, a thousand times. If you've read the Bible at all, see, Ephesians is one of them books you can't help but read every other week. So uh, go over to Ephesians, and I want to read this for you. And uh, it's good stuff. And I have a few things I want to say out of this, so just hang on. It says this, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation for which you are called, with all lowliness and with meekness and with long suffering for bearing one another in love. Endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called into one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. That's enough. It says one more. It says, but unto you, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of God, or gift of Christ. I want to share with you this morning, I, 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 begin, to, uh, I begin to think about this, and I don't know where this word comes from. I, I mean, I don't know where it came from in my life because I'm not into this, but the word came to me, symphony. How many of you know what a symphony is? You ever listen to symphonies? I remember uh, I always told everybody, I said, well, you know, I'm not really into symphony music, uh, per se, but... I remember I used to, when I was driving out to Supa, I'd put channel, I'd put, uh, what is that, channel 8, what is that thing? Uh, it's, uh, uh, they play classical music, that's what they play. I miss some, um, I can't think of the name of it all of a sudden, but it's on the radio anyway. And uh, it comes out of uh, 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 the university down there in, in Phoenix, and they play classical music, that's all they play. You know, and so I put that classical music on because there's no words. It's usually just ministry. It's just just instruments, you know. And I put that on. I pray in tongues, and I drive out there and I drive back, and that's what I do because it's it's soothing mood music uh, generally, and it's good music generally. And if you like that, I'm not too into that. But at the same time, a symphony is. Uh, um, let me give you the let me give you the definition for what I have here. It's a it's it's harmony of any kind. Okay, everybody say harmony. Harmony. Don't you agree that it's easier to flow and be harmonious than it is to be in at each other's throat? He said, "Let me let me read this for you." Now I got to get started here. It says, uh, "It says," uh, and uh, the word symphony is de is derived from the Greek, and I'm not going to try and pronounce that, meaning agreement or con a concord of music. Concert of vocals or instrument music. So it's a it's an agreement. It's something that you know 
Now, let me explain to you what I want to say. You know, the Bible says that he's called us to make a joyful noise. Now, there's a difference between that and a symphony, right? There's a big difference there. But generally, I'm just trying to make a point here. Me, oddly enough, that somebody was talking about music this morning. I think Jennifer said something about it. And I'm thinking, man, that's right now what I want to say this morning. And uh, I was thinking about this this morning because Jeanette was telling me that her little boy, he wants to play the drums. And I thought, well, that's, that's great. I know that Jennifer, or, I mean, uh, Jeanette don't think so, but nonetheless, it's, it's fantastic to have a child want to play an instrument to me. You know, my, one of my sons, is an, he's a very good drummer. Wait, Cody's a good drummer. And uh, you know why he's a good drummer? Because he practiced and 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 he just don't quit. And he loves it. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I play my guitar, but I don't practice like he does. Therefore, he's better than I am at what he does. But see, you know, I was thinking about that when Jennifer, or when I keep wanting to call you Jennifer, when Jeanette was saying, my son wants to play the drums, I thought, you know what? See, God has got a way of doing things. Can you understand what I'm saying? And now I can't get up here and lead worship with just the drums, can I? I can't just get up here. How many of you ever heard uh, somebody come up here and lead worship with a bass guitar? It don't happen very often. Uh, because, see, there's certain instruments that lead and there's other instruments that follow. And that's what it is in the symphony. There's certain instruments that lead, but there's certain instruments that fill. I remember, and I've said this a thousand times, it's one thing to have no drums. It's another thing to have no piano. And it's another thing to have no bass guitar. All of these things are, they, they all fill. But I remember just playing my guitar and somebody would pick up the bass guitar and start playing that thing. And it was like, <gasps> It just filled the air with this beautiful thing, and it, it, took the, it took the hollowness out of it. And I want you to understand something this morning. As a symphony, as a church, we're supposed to make beautiful music, right? That's what we're supposed to do. How many of you know we're supposed to be in agreement together? We're supposed to be in harmony together. We're supposed to work together to, to glorify the name of the Lord. You know, like Jennifer said, they're looking around for kindness, and they're saying, well, I, I, I can't see the kindness of God, but they're looking at you. They're looking at me. They're looking at us. They're looking for God in us. That's the only place they're going to see God is in us. They're not going to see Him out there anywhere else because He ain't out there anywhere else. He's in you. He's through you. He's about exposing Himself like the Bible says in, in, in John chapter 1, verse 12, I think it is, or 14. The Bible says the, the Word made flesh. He is, he's delivered through us. He's expressed through us. His light is shown through us. You agree? So we have this thing called a symphony. And this is, you know, I got in the shower this morning. The Lord said, you know what? There's a, there's a piece that you missed here. And sometimes I ask the Lord, I, I, you know, because let me, let me tell you a little bit about my life. Sometimes I say, Lord, I'm so screwy and so messed up. Now, I know that I'm not condemning myself and I'm not living under guilt. But sometimes I say, how can you still talk to me? Have you ever asked that question? Dude, how can you still talk to me, Almighty God, when I've got all this stuff that hasn't been hung up yet, everything that I've got to deal with, and you still talk to me? How do you do that? But you know what? I, I like what the Bible says when you're talking about it out of Romans chapter 4. He's not, he's, not, he's not collecting all of the sins, and He's not imputing those sins against me. He's imputing His righteousness for me, and He's not keeping track of all the sin. He's saying, you know what? I want you to succeed. How many of you know God wants you to succeed? He wants you to become an overcomer and, 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 and fulfill the destiny of God in your life. He's not looking for a reason to cut you off and say, okay, you screwed up so many times, I'm tired of you. As much as we've all done it. Help me here. If you're perfect, stand up. Thank you. There's no liars in here. There is nobody perfect in here. We're all under construction. We all have the Holy Ghost given to us to develop us, to, to bring us to Jesus. We need Him. Everybody say, I need the Holy Ghost. You bet you do. You need the Holy Ghost more today than you've ever needed. You might need him today more than then. But I'm telling you something. God wants to bring us to a place among ourselves where we're like a symphony. Let me, let me explain to you something. There was a fellow in the symphony. His name is called a conductor. Have you ever watched a conductor? He don't do nothing. Not that I can tell. But he's important. He stands up there with a little stick. I preached on that the other day. What's in your hand? He has a little stick in his hand. But guess what? Everybody's told and they're, 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 they're instructed. You watch that instructor. You watch that conductor because he's the man who knows what to do, when to do, how to do. And you just want, he don't play nothing. 
Well, he may play a lot, but he ain't playing nothing when he's conducting. He's just up there, and everybody's eyes are focused on him. Everybody say, Jesus is the conductor. He's the guy we got to watch. That's right. He's the guy we got to watch because when you take your eyes off him, you're going to be going, I lost my place. Oh, I don't know when to blow my horn. It's true. Now, see, this works in my home, works in our church. And I'm not saying it works because we all have our dilemmas. I'm just saying this is what God's looking for. And the reason sometimes we miss our cue is because we took our eyes, our, our eyes off and we're looking over here, we're looking over there, and we're watching so and so because, well, he's supposed to be doing this. I thought he was, you know, I thought he was going to come in right here and play. No, no, it's not your job to worry about him. Everybody say, you got to be responsible. Yeah. You know what? You're responsible to, listen, this is what I want you to hear. It's your responsibility to practice your instrument. If you don't practice, you're not going to flow with the harmony and the, in the symphony, are you? Y'all are so excited about this. I can tell you're just re you're really into this music lesson. Let me tell you something. It's your responsibility to practice your instrument. You know why? Because as you practice your instrument and you get good at it, you're going to support and you're going to add beautification to somebody else's instrument. Everybody say, I'm the instrument. I'm the instrument. It's not something you're playing on the outside. You are who the instrument. You are the instrument. You are God's Whatever you are. You say, well, I'm a bass guitar. Well, then play it well. Yeah. See, I'm just, a, I'm just an old drum set. Well, you know what? Play it well. And, and you know what? I haven't played it well. Not always. Have you? No. We've, all, we've all missed the cue. We've all had issues. Come on, help me here. But God's not mad at anybody. Have you noticed? Yeah. You know what the conductor, he'll do? He'll go, whoa, stop. <laughs> How many of you have ever seen that episode of Andy Griffith when Barney... And Barney Fife is in there, you know, and they're having the choir. How many of you have seen that? They're having the choir, and Barney is way out of tune. He's way up out here left field. And, and the, the, the so-called choir director, he's going, whoa, what in the world? My ears are hurting. Yeah, I have an earache. And Barney says, oh, well, something's wrong? He's, yeah, something bad wrong. And Barney says, well, here, I have an ear for music. I've been trained in music. Remember? Let me walk through the crowd and I'm going to pick out the guy that's doing the problem. I'm going to go through the crowd and I'm going to listen as they sing. And I'm going to tell you, well, uh, that's the person. But see, sometimes you can't even see past the end of your nose. It was Barney himself. He's going, well, I can fix this. No, you can't fix it because you can't hear it. He goes through the crowd and... Finally, the conductor, or the, the choir director, he goes, well, wait a minute here. And, you know, it's, it's the same thing in life. We don't want to hurt each other's feelings. But, man, you're off key. <laughs> that was what he's finally, you know, Barney, you're off key, dude. You think you've been trained in music, but you can't sing a lick. Now, in real life, he could. I don't know how he could sing so far off a tune. <laughs> and, and when he really could sing, do you understand what I'm saying? Take a song and try to sing off tune. When somebody else is trying to sing the, the melody and you're trying to sing it, I can't do it. But he could. I'm going, boy, what talent. Because he was way out there left. I'm going, boy, that's, he's really got talent. But God's interested in us. Everybody say, harmony. Did you know harmony is gorgeous? When you have people who know how to sing harmony, it adds a dimension that, the, you know, the, 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 the uh, what am I looking for? If you're not singing harmony, you're singing what? I just said it. Melody. If you're not singing the melody, you're singing harmony. And you know, there's different levels of harmony. I can't sing harmony at all. I can't even sing melody. But the point I'm trying to make is, when you have folks who can, oh man, there's some people that we heard the other day, they were singing, who were they, Kel? They were from Canada, remember? Canadian tenors or something like that. These guys were fantastic. I mean, they could sing like crazy. And they were singing a song that really was a moving song. How many of you, how many of you know that we are singing a song that's a moving song? 
We're singing the song of the gospel. We are an expression of a song that has been, been put in this planet by Almighty God, and it's called the life of God. It's called the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we're singing it together. We're supposed to be adding to one another and delivering a beautiful song to the creation that says, Jesus is Lord. You know, if the church can't be in agreement, we're, forget it. You know, uh, let me explain myself here. The greatest feat or the greatest quest in my life is to have my family in harmony. You say, my God, how in the world could you succeed? I don't know. It's tricky. Because you have everybody that has their own mindset. You're just looking at me like, well, I don't have this trouble. <laughs> Well, you need to live with me a while. You'll figure it out. But you know what? God, listen to me. God starts in the family, and he goes to the church, and he goes to the nation, the community, he goes to the nations, he goes to the world, right? <clears throat> and uh, um, I thought to myself this morning as I was, you know, because I've been reading about this for a while, and I thought to myself this morning, I guess the best way to do this is to every morning have a meeting. A meeting of the minds, of the orchestra, if you will. How many of you know they don't just go down there and say, we're going to make beautiful music? They practice and they practice and they practice together. I was telling somebody the other day, you know, I said, hey, uh, you know, music is wonderful and I like to play it, but I want to play with people because that's where you get your, everybody say timing. Timing is valuable. It's, it's, it's everything. Timing is important when you're, when you're making music. It's timing that makes it happen. If you get off time, you may be on tune. You may have the right melody or you may be... But if you're out of time, you don't sound right. Timing is important when it comes to playing. And that's part of the conductor's job. He's, he's given because there was like four different movements in a symphony. And I don't understand all that. But, you know, what I mean by that is you got these people that are doing this. And then at the same time they're doing this, people are over here, they're going to kick in and they're going to do that. And then over here they're going to do something else. And then back here they're going to add to all of it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And see, when you get all of that going and everybody has their place and their time, whoo, man, you got to say, hey, dude, y'all got some good music going on there. It's the difference between just an amateur band and a professional band. I've heard a lot of amateur bands, you know, that they make a joyful noise. <laughs> but then you get quality people that are really good musicians. And let me tell you something, they make some sounds that you're going, holy moly, how do you do such a thing? I was just listening to a minute ago just because they come up on my YouTube account. And I'm going to listen to this. And it was Marty Stewart and somebody else. They were just playing the guitar. I'm going, my goodness sakes. Two guitars and what quality music? Just two. But you know, those are the kind of musicians that they can come in and they can play with 20 or 30 because they have what it takes. And you know what, let me tell you a little something. Listen to this, it, you know, within this, within this thought or this theme of symphonies, there has to be a lot of self-discipline, right? Come on, help me. There has to be, and I, 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 I fail at this in a lot of areas, but there's gotta be a lot of self-discipline. Everybody say it takes practice. You gotta endeavoring to keep the unity of the peace, or the endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. Everybody say endeavoring. Does that sound like practice? Come on, you're just looking at me like really? No, I'm telling you, it takes it takes an effort on your part because you know what? There's going to be times I have to endure you, or you have to endure me. In unity, I'm not saying we have to agree about everything. We probably won't agree about everything, but you know what? We can love each other instead of hate each other. And the one thing we can do is we need to practice our instrument in order that we can, even though we may disagree a little bit, we can still make good music. Let me say another one that's in this idea, of, and I haven't given you a scripture yet, but within this idea of a symphony, there has to be faithfulness. You hear me? you got to be faithful to what you do. Did you know that one of the worst things that happens is when you have a, just say a worship band, for example, all you have is a guitar and a bass guitar and a, and a piano and a drums and maybe a few other you know, outside instruments, what it could be, I don't know. 
the one thing that really hurts a band is a lack of participation or faithfulness. Are you hearing me? Somebody says, well, I want to I wanna join your band and I want to be a part of it. But I don't have time to practice. You're not going to work. It, it, you ain't going to work. You know why? Because it takes, uh, it takes faithfulness to come to the practice. You got to come to the practice. Let's just say it this way: You got to come to church and learn to get along. You know, you got to be there. You got to, you got to. I like what she was saying this morning. We need each other because see, some of y'all knock the rough edges off of me, just like I knock the rough edges off of you, and we work together. And it's like the it's like the stones in the brook. When David went down and picked up five stones, they were under the water, banging each other against the rocks as the water went over them. And he picked up five smooth stones. Just boom, there he goes. He got them. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. He just grabbed one. And I don't know which one killed the giant, but it could have been either one of them. Any of those five full ministers, they slaughtered that giant. And I'm trying to make a point here. You know, God's put us all together. Everybody say all of us. He, he did it on purpose. I've, I've preached this before. God set in the church. I didn't do it. You didn't do it. God did it. He set in the church as it pleased Him. So we need to be faithful, right? We need to be dependable. Right? We need to be disciplined, right? Now, you know what you can do? Everybody see? Everybody understands what you can do, right? First and foremost, you can pray for me because I need all of that. Do you? Now, the next thing is a big one. We need to trust each other. Can we trust one another? You say, I've lost my trust in you. Well, we need to work on getting it back, right? That's a big step, that word trust. That's a big step. Because if we can't trust one another, we're certainly not going to make good music. Right? Just the same way, if you're not faithful or dependable or disciplined, you're not going to make good music. You're just going to be out there making a racket. Are you listening? We need to trust one another. And uh, as far as the church is concerned, how many of you know at home, at home, in your house, um, you may have some issues, right? I don't know about you, but I have plenty of them. You see, when you have people, you have issues, right? You say, I want a perfect church. Well, just close the doors and everybody go home and it'll be better. Are you listening? That's the truth. Because see, where there's people, there's problems. It's always that way. You just got, that's why he says, you know, I was reading earlier, Paul said, with everything that's within you, please leave peaceable together. Right? Why do you think he said that? Because... Well, you have to work at it. Let me explain myself this way if I can. I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to try it this way. Kelly and I have been married for 30, some odd years, 33 years. And uh, sometimes we make nice music and sometimes it's real bad. Say, so you just tell the truth. Well, this is the truth. And if you tell me anything better about your own marriage or your own life, I'll probably say you're a liar. Because we all go through stuff, right? We all endure stuff. And we all go through headaches and trials and tribulations and oh, you name it, we got it. Because humanity's the same. And uh, I told her, I've told her many a times, I say, you know what? I'm sorry, I don't think like you do. And she goes, well, I'm really sorry you don't think like I do. <laughs> you know, I know. Because women think different than men. And I have no clue why God Almighty, the smart as he is, did that to me. Why did he do that? Why couldn't we just, you know, that's why we need to endeavor to keep the unity. We need to endeavor. That's a strong word. Everybody say endure. endure. That's what it means. You've got to endure some things because it's not all going to be cake and ice cream in this life. But, you know, because we want to make good music or we have a symphony or our family and believe me we have problems man we got issues we got all kinds of stuff we deal with all the time to the point i'm sick of it i mean come on help me is anybody you see somebody said well i don't have that problem probably because you don't have no kids at home <laughs> probably because you live alone i watch people they live alone most of their life and then they get married and they have this huge bomb go off they go what happened 
Well, you got married. You got married and you, now you got to live with this person that don't think like you think. They don't see the same thing you see. They're not going to flow the same way you're going to. You're going to have to come together somehow in the middle and work it out. And I don't know why opposites attract. They say they do. I don't know. You know, you got one radical. You know, this is the way it is in me and Kelly's family. Our family. Kelly's more of a perfectionist than me. Therefore, she thinks I ought to see it like her. And I'm not that kind of a perfection. So I think, well, no, you, you know, hey, come on here. Even though God is more of a perfectionist than he is, he is a perfectionist. He's not more. He is absolutely perfect. And everything he's created is perfect. So Kelly's more godly than I am. Because that's God. But you know what? He just ain't done that in me yet. But thank God he's imputing righteousness. Come on. <laughs> But because I trust her, everybody say trust. Within the church or within the family, because I trust her, guess what? We have one banking account. <gasps> Dangerous. <coughs> one. Now, you know, I, I don't want to pick on people who have two or three, but when you're married, if you can't trust one another, you better kick somebody in the tail. If you can't have one bank account and trust each other, hey, and how many of you know that I haven't done everything right? But she still trusts me. Or at least she told me she did. <laughs> and you know what? When you only have 10 or $15 in your account anyway, it don't have to be too much trust involved. Because you're not going to go out and do too much damage. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody said, you need to have, I can't remember the name of the people, but uh, LifeLock. You know, LifeLock. They'll protect your account. They'll take care of your business. They'll make your credit good. I'm going, hey, don't even worry about me. Just don't worry about it. If they got anything, they didn't get much. They probably might, you know, I've had that happen to me. Somebody got my social security number. You know, sometimes it's just one number and you're, you're stuck. They just get a couple of numbers and they start running them together. It happens to be your number, dude. You're hung up. Anyway. Everybody say trust. trust. You know what? Listen to me. You got to trust that your neighbor, whoever they are in church, is going to practice their instrument. Are you listening? You got to trust that they're going to give it their best shot, right? Let's go back to Ephesians 4 real quick. Watch this. It says, I'm going to just jump down and it says, Watch this. I think that uh, Sister Jennifer talked about this a little bit. It says in verse 16, For whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual, everybody say effectual, effectual. working, right? Effectual working, working in the, in the measure of every part, maketh increase in the body unto the edifying of itself in love. All right, did you hear what I just said? How many of us are effective or we're having an effect, or we're promoting quality music. Somebody says, I don't even like music, so you're talking over my head. But you understand what I'm talking about. You understand the principle of what I'm trying to say. Everybody has to trust one another. They have to be faithful to each other. They have to be committed to one another. They have to be disciplined for each other. How many of you know that we don't serve God because it's all about me? Right? We serve God because it's all about Him. How many of you know the Bible says we're bought with a price? We're no longer our own, but He owns us, right? And therefore, I was, I'm was i trying so hard to practice this. The Bible says, whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. Kelly said something the other day that just I, it informed me. And it's so simple. She said that Derek Prince wrote in a little piece. He said, everything I do, I get up in the morning and I say, Lord, how can I please you? And I'm going, holy cow. What an amazing, simple statement. How can I please you? And then I look at my past life and I'm going, my God, no wonder I have failed. Because I didn't get up in the morning and say, Lord, how can I please you? What am I going to do or how can I go about this day to please you first about everything else? Because how many of you know nine times out of ten when you get up in the morning, it's all about how can I please me? And I said, told Cuddy, I said, that is so powerful. How can I please you, Lord? Did you know why that uh, uh, Enoch was taken? Because he pleased God. That's pretty simple stuff, but it's powerful. He pleased God, and therefore God says, hey, I can't help it. i got to go get him. 
I just got to have him. And he went and got him. And he had this testimony repeat after me. He pleased God. That's all he did. See, that's too simple. Well, it's simple to say it, but it's probably very, very difficult to walk it. See, let me ask you a question. In our, in our, in our symphony, in the church, if there's even a little cloud floats over, our electric goes off. Or if it even acts like it might be windy, it'll go off. Yeah, our electric company, they make sure that it goes off early and it stays off long. How many of you know within our symphony, everybody say that's the church? You've got to have trust. You've got to be faithful. You've got to be faithful, right? You've got to be disciplined. You've got to be dependable. Let me ask you a question. With our, within the uh, church, the symphony, the body of Christ, because all this is the same. I'm saying this. The Bible says the same thing, just different ways. That's all I'm doing. Within this symphony, can we, can we give our time, our talent, and our treasure and trust each other? What do you think? I mean, if we can't trust each other, let's just go home. If we can't be faithful to one another, go somewhere else. If you can't be, uh, I mean, and listen, if your heart's not in it, what are you doing? Right? That's the bottom line. If, if, if your heart's not in it, you're wasting my time, your time, everybody's time. Because if God says, you need to go do something else, boy, you need to go do it. Because God's, uh, 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 let me tell you something, let me, let, me, let me explain myself. If you're, you know, uh, there's a, a Phoenix Symphony and a Havasu Symphony, there's all kinds of symphonies around the country, right? And uh, it's going to be difficult for you to live in Havasu and play in that symphony. You understand what I'm saying? If your heart's not in it, you need to do whatever's got to be done to take care of that issue. Because we need to make good music because we want to and because God put us here, right? And that's important. That's important. You might say, well, I'm just visiting. Well, I'm not talking to you. I'm just simply making a statement of fact. We need to play together. We need to work together. And you know what? I was praying this morning about my family. And I said, you know what, the Lord, the best thing I can do, I always wake up early. Do you wake up early? I don't know why. All of a sudden, I just wake up early. I'm going, God, what are you doing? Why are you waking me up so early? Sometimes I wake up at 3.30 in the morning. I'm going, come on. I said, Lord, I don't even want to wake up this early. And uh, generally, I'm, I'm awake. I just get up. Not at 3.30. Generally, I say, I'm the Holy Ghost. I ain't getting up right now. It's too dark outside. But I'll come down here early. And uh, I have no clue why I said all that. But um, we need to, uh, I don't have a clue why I said we get up early. I don't remember what my thought was going. But I'll tell you what, we need to remember this. We, everybody say we. we. Everybody say we. we. That's important. We are God's husbandry. We are God's garden. We are in this together. And I'm going to tell you right now, it takes all of us. It does. It takes all of us. Um, I have a scripture here I want to read to you. I, I didn't read any of these, but I have a lot of them. That's all these are just scriptures. It says this. Let me read this couple of them. It says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalms 133 and 1. Read the whole chapter. And he describes what the power of unity is. What is unity? It's oneness. Uh, Paul said something like this. He said this. Watch what he says. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. He says, Now I beseech you, there, he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak, that you all, everybody say all. Oh. You all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly, everybody say perfectly, 
perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. My God, that is an amazing statement. That's an amazing statement. Um, I'll, this is the one I was reading, I, I quoted to you a minute ago. Romans 12 and 18 says, If it be possible, as much life was in you, live peaceably with all men. Watch this, Romans 14 and 19. It says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify the other. Amen? That's good stuff. I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with this. Can we make good music or what? You know what everybody said? It depends on me. It does. Because it's not a one-man show. It never has been a one-man show. It never will be. You say, well, it's all about the conductor. Well, I agree. It's all about Jesus. But uh, we need to flow in agreement. Can two walk to agree there? Uh, yeah, to, can two walk together except they agree? Obviously the answer is no. But we can. Because we can make up our minds. We will. Amen? We will. Everybody say, every, everybody, well, don't say it, just remember this. We need to learn to trust one another. We need to be disciplined. And you know what? Listen, before all of you, I need what I'm preaching. Okay? We need to be disciplined. We need to be dependable. We need to be faithful. I know it's the same kind of a thought pattern, but that's true. And this is truth. Okay? All right, I'm done. Now, let me just tell you this. Uh, for the sake of, uh, through the rest of this summer until the fall, we're not going to have any church on Sunday.